Good evening, everyone. Erev Tov, everyone. Who's with us? Dr. Lez with us. Shalom, Rav. Hi, Rav. Hello, Stephen. I missed you last week. Where you been oh, on Sunday? I had, I had a few. Last Sunday, my father was he had to go to hospital. So. Oh, Rufus Lema. Uh, yeah. Rufus Lema. I had to, had to take him to hospital, yeah. Okay, with Rosh Lema, please right. God. Hilton with us. No, Erev Tov, everyone. Right. Dr. Les, we wait another few more minutes okay. because still before um, 8 o'clock, we'll just wait for more people to come. I'm sure everyone would, be, would like to hear what you have to say. So I, we'll I don't just know <laughs> Anyway, anyway, that's most important. That give us the update. Just, just let's give them one more minute until people usually log on. It's taken time, and um, we'll look from there. You know what I'm saying? But it's not going to take too long. It's not going to take too long if people are going to start logging. Otherwise, how are you doing, Doctor Les? You look to me like you called. Yeah, no, I just wasn't fe I wasn't feeling so well this afternoon. But Baruch Hashem, I'm I'm at home and I'm drinking hot drinks and yeah, thank God I should be good. He's got the question. You thanks. too. The you rub, last like week, last week was mm -hmm. for us it was Purim, so we we had the Megillah reading. That's why I couldn't join this year. It was on on Sunday night, and I just want to mention, you know, the atmosphere in Israel. I've been here thirty years. And it's so sad that the atmosphere before Purim, the school kids get dressed up in their costumes and there's a, there's like a joyful atmosphere in the country. This year, we didn't see that. It was so subdued. On the day of Purim, there were misibot and there were people had their, their feasts and there was a lot of people, you know, only in the afternoon did we see a little bit of joy coming out because it's really difficult times we're going through. And uh, Rav, can I start? <laughs> So, yeah, okay, so today, uh, this morning, we woke up to, again, very sad news of a bus attack on Route Number 90, that's to the Dead Sea in the Jordan Valley, where there was somebody who actually w was an assassin. He waited in an ambush to ambush, and three Israelis are seriously injured, so we, we just dove in for a refresh lemma. And when they're seriously injured, you know, sometimes they don't make it. It's very serious. And this doesn't get reported anywhere else except for Israel and the Jewish community. And today also, Rob, we heard the very sad news of the passing of Joe Lieberman. A very, he was a senator that was stood for the vice president with Al Gore. And a very proud Jew, very proud Zionist and a very proud Jew. I would met him about two or three times here in Israel. And later tonight, I'll share the video that he gave. Uh, very special. And also we had the passing of Professor Daniel Kahneman. He was 90. He was the fifth Israeli recipient of the Nobel Prize for economics. So he passed away. So it's, it's actually quite sad. But, you know, it's amazing that we have five Nobel Prize winners from this small country. Um, some amazing sad things. You see, that's why the, the Mutia is so um, somber. Two Israeli survivors from the massacre actually um, were detained in Manchester Airport. And they were harassed. And and the police at the border police detained them for two hours, questioning them and saying, we don't want you to do here what you do in uh, in Gaza. These were two survivors. And Rav, I had a patient today. It's my brother's patient. But I had a patient who, when he, he works for Hatsola Voluntary, and when he heard on the 7th, he got on his motorbike and he went down south to help immediately to to. To, he's so modest, I wanted to video him, but he said, no, he doesn't want to be videoed. But what a, what an amazing person. So um, that's that. Now, also, we, we I don't know if you're aware in South Africa, there was the testimony of Amit Susana. She was uh, one of the captives that was released from the tunnels. And she did an eight-hour interview with the New York Times. And what's amazing is that the deafening silence from all the human rights groups, all the people that were supposed to give support, me too, unless you're a Jew, um, it's just incredible. But she's such a hero that she 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 actually came forward and she publicly spoke about her horrendous and harrowing time being sexually assaulted, such a hero. And then this is something amazing, Rav, and I won't be long, but 
You know, I was so aware when we finished reading the Megillah, the very last verse, it says that most of the people supported Mordechai. Not all, which is actually quite unbelievable. After all the miracles, after all what he did, not all the Yidden supported him. It says most. And um, so you have a hero like Amit Susana, and then you have the opposite of a hero, somebody from UCT, and it's in the Jerusalem, in the South Indian Jewish Report. Her name is Susan Levine, who brought a motion to boycott Israel at the UCT, uh, which is such a, a, an incredibly terrible resolution. It was like a miracle that from there were 70 for the resolution and 75 against and 15 abstained. So that, that resolution of boycotting Israel from UCT didn't pass. But it was brought by the opposite of a Jewish hero. It's the Jewish like non-hero, if you want to use a better term. So um, we see also it's very sad, and it's the end of an era that I'll, I won't be flying to South Africa. And this is something really quite, quite, you know, we have nostalgia of, of Al Al, and uh, it's, it's a sign of the times. This is, uh, it's, it's actually quite sad, and it's the end of an era. It really is the end of an era. But to look on the positive, and we always have to look on the positive, we are so grateful that a group of a delegation of South Africans came to Israel, and they were here. And these are the normal South Africans. These are, and they spoke on R24. They, they went to the South. They went, and it gave such comfort. It was reported in all the newspapers that there are many, many South Africans, not the corrupt government, but many ordinary South Africans that support us and are with us in this very difficult time that we're going through. So it gives us a lot of comfort. And what gives us tremendous comfort is to know that the South African Jewish community, and we have people in our sort, and I would urge everybody to see Douglas Murray when he came to South Africa. He is like a tzaddik, that guy. And his interview on Eyewitness News, it's just unbelievable what, a, what an amazing person he is and how Howard Feldman did that interview. It was just phenomenal. So it's there for everyone to see. And, and we have got friends and we're not alone. The Economist, and I'm going to end up with this, Rob, The Economist, which is a very worldwide publication, has on its front cover the flag of Israel in the desert. And it says Israel alone. But you know what? They got it all wrong. We're not alone. We've got Hashem. And we are Shem's people. And, and and that's what every Jew has to remember. It gives us chizuk to know that we are Am Yisrael. And this is the land that Hashem promised us. And and other countries will come and go. But we will always remain. Yeah. Amanetza. Amanetza. Be'ezrat Hashem. Thank you, Dr. Lez. Always very interesting. Shekoa, thank you very much. So now we're going to start the show. Be'ezrat Hashem, na'asev v'natzliach, ve'ashem alenu berachama v'yarviah. I would like to dedicate the show in a soul of Esther Kaven Batkitsiah, Mordechai ben Rahma, Tamar Batzeava, Itan ben Keren v'avishai na'e, Malka Regina Batjoye, Yaakov Salomon ben Farha, Farha bat Salha, Nishmatam tiyet shvura v'tsuva ha'in. Also, I would like to dedicate the Sha'ur for all of those that need the Rekua Shleima, Lior Abad Miriam, Moshe Mati Ben Farha, Rav Moshe Ben Bayabadia, Rav Moshe Ben Devor, Rav Shlomo Yuda Ben Dalia, Rav Abraham Ben Marima, Dvora Bat Esther, Shaina Kela Bat Hana, Mordechai David Ben Lea, Yuda Ilel Ben Shulamit Lea, Hain Nahum Ben Pesa Reza Kohen, Baruch Ben Sarah Hiena, Uva Kaden, Bat Tali Esther Lea, Bat Rachel, Pesah Hitchat Ben Ela, Ayala Eden Bat Rivka, Natalie Marika Bat, Sar Rivka Tal, Yehuda Ben Eliezer, Meir Ben Yehuda, Ariel Ben Shilat, Uri Ben Yael, Vehananya Shalom Ben Avigdor. Please God, Rufu Ashlema, to them, Velechol, Hole, Uptsoe, Amo, Bet Israel, Bechol Makom Shem. Okay, Parashat Shav, Rabotai, Parashat Shav, it's the second parsha already on Sefer Vaikra. And Parashat Shav speak also about the Korbanot, also about the clothes of the Kohen Gadol. But we'll speak now, we'll go step by step, and we'll try to understand certain ideas about the Korbanot and what the Torah tried to tell us. Let's start. Vaidaber Adonai el Moshe Lemor. Tzav et Aaron ve'et banav le'emor. Zot Torah ta'ola. Hi ha'ola. Al Mokuda, 
על המזבח כל הלילה עד הבוקר, ואש המזבח תוקד בו. בכבוד ג'פרי. Good evening. Hashem spoke to Moshe saying, Command Aaron and his sons saying, This is the law of the elevation offering. It is the elevation offering that stays on the flame on the altar all night until the morning. And the fire of the altar should remain flame on it. Okay. Let's try to understand what the Torah tried to tell us. Shav et Aaron ve'et banav. The word shav is to command. Okay? But Rashi HaKadosh, Rabbi Shlomo Yitzhaki, that born in a city of Tro, in the north of France, he born around 984 years ago. Rashi HaKadosh said, I'm going to read it in Hebrew and then I will translate it to English. En tzav ela lishon ziruz miyad uledorot. He said the word tzav, that command Aharon and his kids, it's actually lishon ziruz. Ziruz is quickly, something that quick, something, hello Marky, it's something uh, that quick and, quick and fast. And the Mephashim asks, what is Rashi tribe to tell us? What it means, Lishon Zeruz, quick, miyad, immediately, veledot, and to generation. We have to understand what's hiding behind Rashi interpretation. What is Rashi tribe to tell us? Because if you look at the word, en tzav el azeruz, that means to make person to be hurried, to be quick, and it's for now and for generation. What does that have to do with what we read about Korban Aula? So to understand that, we have to go to the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, page 20, folio 1. Hazal explained that the word ziruz, ziruz is to be quick, to be fast, okay? It doesn't mean only speed. It means that when a person do a mitzvah, you have to do it very accurately, okay? Not only very accurately, you have to observe the mitzvah properly. And we know that in Bet HaMikdash, it was, they used to sacrifice hundreds of korbanot every day. Hundreds, hundreds of korbanot. And the kohanim that used to serve have a very difficult mission. It's not a simple mission that when you have a hundred korbanot to remember which korban is which one. Which one has to be burned completely? Okay? La korban ola. Korban ola. Kishmo kenhu. Ola. Ole kulo ala misbeh. That means the korban ola get burned completely. Okay? No one benefits from it. It's only an honoring of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then we have Korban Hata, we have Korban Shlamin. All different Korbanot, what does it mean? There is certain Korbanot <coughs> that you can't eat from them. There is certain Korbanot that you can eat from them, but only the Kohen. There is certain Korbanot that not only the Kohen can eat, also the Israel, the owner of the Korban. Now, there is a hundred korbanot being sacrificed, one after each other. And people have to bring them. They have to check them. And then, obviously, they have to skin them. Then they have to put it on the korban. They have to give portion to the coin. They have to give portion for the, for the what do you call it, for the owner of the korban, the Israel. Then these to sparkling the blood. Everything has to be specifically and quickly. Okay. And everything has to be done in a right measure. That means that the Kohanim have a, a, a very important job because there is certain korbanot that you can eat in Yerushalayim. There is korban that you can eat outside the homot of Yerushalayim, outside the wall of Jerusalem. Okay? Or 
או נעזערה. So we see from here that the Torah come and tell us, צו את אהרון, command אהרון and his kids, because his kids was כהנים, לאמור, and tell them. זאת תורת העולם. This is the law that how you sacrifice קורבן העולם. That means you take קורבן העולם, okay? You obviously check that it's kosher and then you shecht it. And after you shecht it, obviously you have to skin it, you have to open it, you have to make sure that the korban is kosher. And then you burn it all. Why? Because korban ola kishmo kenu. It's going on top of the misbeah, it burned completely. So now we understand what does it mean leshon zirut. But still we have to understand מיד ולדורות. What does it mean מיד ולדורות? So we have, to, we have to explain like this. And I'm going to bring the commentary of Rabbi Haim Ben Atar. Rabbi Haim Ben Atar, born in the city of Sali, he born around 328 years ago in Morocco. Sorry. And he explained in his book, Or Haim, Nakadosh, something very important. He said that there is seder of the korbanot. What it means, seder? There is an order which korban you sacrifice first, which korban is second, which korban after that come. You can't just come and shech the korban. He said that you have to understand that the first korban that before you start sacrificing any korbanot, it's korbanatami. Korbanatami, that they used to do it twice a day, early morning, okay, and ben arbay. And then there is also korban ola that came after that. And after that, there's all different korbanot. Not only that, what is that korban? What you have to bring Korbanatami, that that's the first korban that you have to bring. What is it? Is it a goat? Is it a lamb? Is it a bull? What is it? All of those, what it means, miyad veledorot. You have to remember that when you do it, you have to do it immediately. But you have to do it now and also for generation. What it means for generation? It's come to tell you that in Bet Amikdash, the Kohanim have to know which Korban have to be first, sacrificed first. Which Korban come after Korban Atami, the Dutch Korban Minha. And then the other Korbano. And which Korban is Korban Ola? A korban, a korban a, what do you call it? A, no. I forgot the name, no, uh, Korban Atami, it had to be made that the Korban is a lamb. Okay? The lamb, that's Korban Atami. And Hazal tell us something very interesting story in a Gemara in Masechet Menachot. The Gemara in Masechet Menachot in Samech Dalet, Amud Bet, that means 64, folio 2, tell us a story that when the Roman put the city of Jerusalem in a, in a siege, the children of Israel couldn't have korbanot. So what they used to do? They used to buy the korban that called korbanat amit from the Roman. How they used to do it? They used to take a basket, a big basket, and they used to give, put money inside and roll it down the wall, down for the Roman. And they used to give them money. And the Roman used to put a lamb and they used to take it up. Until this, there is a story, until one kuti, one Mahshemov uh, for anti-Jewish person, came and tell him, what are you doing? As long that the children of Israel are sacrificing Korban Atamid, you can never conquer the city. Then we know the story that they put the chazim. Anyway. But what does it come to tell you? that even when Jerusalem was underneath the siege, the head, the Kohanim, knew that they cannot bring any other korban except the lamb to start the 
קורבנות להזעודה. And that's what it's come to tell you. That not only it's good to be accurate and to know, but you have to understand that there is also all the hard covenant. And that's miyad now, when Bet HaMikdash was exist. But what it mean le dorot, to generation? For example, today we don't have Bet HaMikdash. Bet HaMikdash is, is not exist. So how we can do for the door? So on a shot of the dvarim, you have to learn it. If you have the koanim, you have to know the order, the sequence. What's come first, what's come second. But I saw a different interpretation that brought by Rabbi Yaakov Haim Sofer. Rabbi Yaakov Haim Sofer, he wrote the famous book that called um, Kaf Haim. It's a book of halachot. And he born in Baghdad in Iraq around 157 years ago, plus minus. And he explained something extraordinary. He said that today in our time that we don't have Bet HaMikdash. Over 2,000 years, over 2,500 years that we don't have Bet HaMikdash. So how is that applicable to us today? He said like this, today that we cannot sacrifice the korbanot, you have a different order. That when you start to daven, when you start to daven, you have to start the korbanot. You have to learn the sequence of the korbanot. You have to learn the order of the korbanot. By that, that you learn the order of the korbanot, okay, and you saying them, that's what's come to tell you that you know and you learn the order of the korbanot. But there is a different hadith. Midrash Tanhuma, it's a midrash that's been written by Rabbi Tanhuma. And our parsha in Siman Yudalet, Siman Yudalet, it's called, let's call it verse or chapter 14, he explains something extraordinary. When a person learns the korbanot, when a person reads the korbanot every morning, and he understands what he's saying, the worst it's ever been. Mute. Let me just mute. Okay, everyone is muted. Yeah, was nausea. It's come to tell you something extraordinary. When a person reads the Korbanot, it's considered like he himself sacrificed, brought a sacrifice. So it's come to tell you, say, Rabbi Yaakov, Rabbi Yaakov, Haim Sofer, right? he said, today that we don't have Bet HaMikdash, how you can keep this halacha that the Kohanim have, how we as Israel keep the halacha, by that that you're reading the Korbanot, it's considered like you sacrifice. Okay? By that, that you study the Korbanot, it's considered for the Kohanim, for everyone, the, the Israelites, that they sacrifice the Kohanim and they keep the orders. It's come to tell you that what it said at the beginning, Sab et Aaron ve'et bana. That means, Rashi say. That means it's quickly. Quickly we say that Hazal Negemara in Masechet Shabbat 20, call you one, say that quickly is not just to be very quick, it's also to be accurate. Immediately and for the, for the future generation, that even when Bet HaMikdash not going to be exist, that you have to remember which korban come first, like the Rabbi Haim ben Atar say. But Rabbi Yaakov Sofer said, but when Bet HaMikdash not going to be exist, you have to remember that you have to read the korbanot, not to forget the order of the korbanot. So now we can understand Rashi. Rashi explained mm, Ziruz is quickly, and we brought the Gemara Masechet Shabbat that to be accurate. Miyad is to know the order of the korbanot, like Sarah behind Ben Atar. Ledorot, when Bet HaMikdash not exists, 
that we should read Seder HaKorbanot before we start davening. And that's what he tells you. Everything in life has to be an order and understanding that everything mitzvah that you do, you have to do it quick, but you have to be very accurate about it. And not just to do mitzvah chaplak. We explain that the hachmea uh, hen, hachmea sod, that means the mystical rabbi explained that when you do a mitzvah and you don't do it properly, you're creating an angel, an incomplete angel. And that's why we have to be perceived. Let's continue in verse. It says, Ha'ola al mokda. That means that Zot Torah Ha'ola al mokda. What does it mean, Ha'ola al mokda? That the korban of Ola have to be on the fire. Okay. But if you look at the Humash and you look at the Sefer Torah, the letters name from the word mokda is very small. Many of the Mefarshim ask the same question. I don't understand why that the word Mem have to be small. Why is it been written in the Torah and in the Hamash also hmm. that the word Mokda, the latest Mem of the word Mokda, small? What's the Hidush here? So there is different interpretation. I'm going to bring the the one idea of the Kutsa Kerebe. Kutsa Kerebe is Rabbi Menachem Mendel Morgenstern. He born in uh, around 231 years ago in Poland, plus nine. And he said something extraordinary. He said that the word Mem on a fire, Mokda, it's mean excitement. It means sometimes a Jewish person suddenly feel excitement. You want to worship Akadosh, you want to do mitzvot, you want to do kindness. Okay? You want to double with Kavana. And he start performing. You know, sometimes people forgot themselves in a davening and they do that. Ado, the, 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 the Shulchan Aruch, the Maran Shulchan Aruch, said that a person shouldn't shake his hand and his head and lift up his hand to the heaven because the angel in the heaven laughing at him. Um, I was davening in one shul and they asked me to give a, to give a show. It was a Chabad, Chabad shul. And came a guy and he was davening and was doing that. And I said to the rabbi there, you know, it's against Allah, you know, the Shulchan Aruch actually saying the, the angel laughing on him. I didn't know. I said, look, Shulchan Aruch, look, over him. Anyway, I show him, I send him the thing, and I said to him, explain to your, 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 your guys, your friend. You know? So anyway, I told them, the rabbi accepted him. I think two weeks later, two weeks later, it's happened that I needed to dive in there again. They asked me to come and talk, and uh, I, actually I didn't dive in there. I just came to give the shaul and I gone. I met again the guy, and uh, there was davening. I came a bit earlier because uh, they daven a bit late. They, 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 they start very late, the minion. And when I came there, there was uh, in the end of Musa from the guy again, shukhling and. So I said to the rabbi, no, did you tell him? And he said, yeah. I said, but I see that he doesn't listen. He said, no, they don't listen. Anyway, so we I finished the show and, and uh, we said, we have, they have, a, what do you call it, a brocha, and they have a chat. And I said to the guys, you, you know, did you get the, the sauce? The guy looked at me, was very upset that I told the rabbi, where is the source that you shouldn't to behave like this in a daven? And the angel laughing. What is it mean? Say the kuchake rabbi. That when a person suddenly feel excitement, that feel that he have elevation, that he want to serve a kadosh baruch Hu, he say al-mogda, the fire that you have on you, that excitement, 
to serve a kadosh Baruch to do mitzvot, to do kindness, to daven with kavana. He said, that fire, keep it in your heart. Okay? You shouldn't show it on the outside. And that's why the little man comes more. That although that you have this fire, this excitement to serve a kadosh Baruch Hu, do it in modesty. Do it in humbleness. Don't show everyone. That's one interpretation why the letters name it's small. There is another idea that if we take the letters name, the gematria of the letters name is forty. What is it come to tell? It's come to hint to us something important that the Torah we receive on a fortieth day. What do you mean on a fortieth day? You all gonna say no, 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 no. We got it on the 49 days, on the 50th days. That was when they left Egypt. But the 40, it's from the day that Moshe Rabbeinu gone up to heaven. Moshe Rabbeinu was in heaven for 40 days and 40 nights. After that, when he came down, Ben Israel received the Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu given Ben Israel all the Torah. So it's come to tell you that you have to understand, you know, why 40? Why Dafka the Mem Ktana? To tell you that the Torah that you have, you received it after Moshe Rabbeinu was in heaven for 40 days and 40 nights, he brought down the Torah. Okay? And the man to show modesty. And who was the humble man, the most modest? Modest man, most humble man, Moshe Rabbein. And that's why the man Ketana. That's al Mubida on the fire. Okay, we spoke almost for a half an hour just on the first verse. Let's move on. Let's go to verse 3. And verse 3, it says like this. Velavash ha-kohen mido bad u-mikhnase bad yilbash al besaro veherin et ha-deshen אשר תוכל לאש את העולם על המזבח וסמור אצל המזבח. The Cohen shall don his fitted linen tunic, and he shall don linen breeches on his flesh. He shall separate the ash of what the fire consumed of the elevation offering on the altar, and place it Next to the altar. Okay. So if you look, Mido, the word Mido, Rashi Akadosh actually bring the Gemara in Masechet Psahim in page 65, folio 2, and the Gemara in Masechet Yoma in page 23, folio 2. He said that the word Mido, it's mean that the Kohen had to wear the clothes that he wear have to be his specific size, exactly his size. Okay? And we have to understand what it means his size. That the clothes that the Kohen Gadol have to wear is clothes. Obviously. So what's the Hidush here? A <sighs> sure beautiful Hidush that the Hachna Musar, the Musar Rebbe explained. And the Musar Rebbe explained like this, that a person have to understand that in life, everything has to do in every measure that you do, have to be with proper measure. That means proper size. Everyone has to eat. You must eat. You must drink. You must drink. But everything has to be with moderation. That means that you can't go overboard eat overboard, drink overboard, sleep overboard. It's come to tell you, Rashi, say that the clothes that the Kohen Gadol wear, it have to be his size, exactly, specifically, that will fit him. Also you, that when it's come to your life, you have to sleep six to eight hours, not more. You have to eat. Eat. Eat what you need. Don't overkill yourself. When is it come? Usually. 
when people go to a simha, to occasion, and they feel like the food is for free, let me eat as much as I can, there is plenty. Why are you eating so much? Is it healthy? Hazal say that it's not healthy, the Rambam say no. Hazal say, when I say Hazal, it's the Rambam, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, the Maimona, he born in the city of Cordova, uh, 890 years ago. And he said like this, listen to that. He said that a person should eat not to, to fill up his stomach full, only three quarter, why? And then to stop. Why? Because it takes time for the body to feel, for the person to feel that he's full. And sometimes people, you know, eat and eat, it's, it's like Beyond understanding. Or in Purim, people get drunk. You know, after Purim, on Shushan Purim, <laughs> on Monday morning, I have people in the Minyan coming and I wanted to give them uh, aliyot. I wanted to give them. The one guy said to me, I'm completely hangover. I can't. I just can't. He cannot double. He cannot go up to, to Daven. He can go up to the Amu. Why? Because he overdrank on Purim. Where does it say that it's a mitzvah to get drunk on Purim? Ade de lo yada, the Rambam explained that the person should drink more than he gets used to drink. Okay? And also brought the, 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 by the, by the, what do you call it, the, the Rashbam. He said, how much you should drink? If a person gets used to drink, let's say, a glass of wine every day, on pouring, drink double. Why? Because after the second one, you already want to sleep. You go to sleep. And then you don't know Ben Baruch Mordechai Laru Raman. That's the mitzvah. But it doesn't say that the mitzvah to drink, to get drunk, and to vomit, and to embarrass other people, waste gvod abriot, and etc. And many people intend to drink all different alcohol. No, that doesn't say. If you look what the Shulchan Aruch say, that you should drink red wine. Red wine. <laughs> and people mixing beer, mixing vodka, whiskey. That doesn't say that. So it's come to tell you that Velabash HaKohen Mido Bad. What does it mean Mido? His size. That in life, you need to eat. You must eat. Eat what you need to eat. You need to drink. Drink. Don't overkill yourself. You need to sleep. Sleep. You have to do that in life. Everything in moderation. And the Rambam call it Derech Hazahav. The middle way. Don't be too extreme to the right. Don't be too extreme to the left. That's the Rambam in al the Op. That's the second idea. Another idea that brought by the, the, the Rabbi Yonatan Eifschitz. Rabbi Yonatan Eifschitz, born in the city of Krakow in, uh, in Poland, he born 334 years ago, plus minus. And he says, you know what does it mean, Madobad? He said like this. He said, and he actually based his commentary on what Hazal tells us in a Gemara in Masechet Ketubot in page 8, folio 2. There Hazal tells us something very interesting. He said that in the time, the poor people used to wear linen. Linen, in Hebrew, it's called Pishtan. Pishtan, okay, that it's also shosh. Take the word bad, okay? Mido bad, mem, okay, sorry, bed dalet, bed dalet, it means six, shesh. It's come to tell you something very important. A person that want to serve a kadosh Baruch, a person that want to be Talmit Hacham, can wear name brand clothes. Why? Because all day he's thinking about the name brain clothes. Not that it's halachat liyasu. But if you want to be modest, Talmud Chacham has to be modest. 
You can't go and flash with a suit that made by Gucci or Pierre Cardin. I don't know, all different fancy names. Okay? I don't know what they call those fancy um, um, uh, names that they have. It's come to tell you that the person that had to serve a Kadosh Baruch Hu had to wear nice clothes. Not that Chaz B'Shalom had to go with dirty clothes or tear clothes. Chaz B'Shalom, that we didn't show. But you can't go and wear those fancy name brand clothes. That's not going to make you Talmud Hakam. That's, that's what you're going to do. is just to show off. Okay? And that's what the Torah tells you. Your size. What it means, your size? It's a Mido Bad. Bad Gematria Shesh Pishtan. Something simple. Don't show off. Be modest. That's mean the Talmud Hakam. Even with his clothes, he has to be modest. He can't wear name brand clothes. Three different opinions. What does it mean? Velabasha Kohen Mido Bad. That means the Kohen have to wear simple clothes, not very fancy. Okay, let's go to verse 4. And here we're going to connect it by Ezrat Hashem to Shabbat Kodesh. And look what it says in, 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 uh, in verse 4. Upashat et begadav velabash begadim acherim vootsi et adeshen el mechutz lamachane el makom tahor. He shall remove his garments and don other garments. And he shall remove the ash to the outside of the camp to a pure place. Okay. On the Pshat of the Dvarim, the Torah tells us that the Kohen, when he served in Bet HaMikdash, he wear a certain clothes. Okay, when he served Bet HaMikdash. But when it's come to take the ash after the fire burned the wood, okay, the logs, what's happening? When you take the ash, change your clothes and wear a different clothes. On a Pshat of the Dvarim, that the, the, the clothes that you're serving a Kadosh Baruch Hu, it's not nice with the same clothes to go and remove the ash. Because they're going to get dirty. How are you going to serve a Kadosh Baruch Hu? But Hazal in the Gemara in Masechet Shabbat, in page 114, folio 1, right in the top of the page of, uh, of uh, 114, folio 1, Hazal tells us something extraordinary. Hazal tell us something very interesting. Hazal tell us, Minayin leshinui begadim min Torah. Where do you learn that you have to change your clothes in honor of Shabbat? That's what Hazal in the Gemara asking. Hazal in the Gemara saying that on Shabbos, from here you learn, Hazal tell us that on Shabbat Kodesh, a person should wear Clothes in honor of Shabbat. That means special clothes for Shabbat. That means clothes that you don't wear during the week. That's what Hazal tells us. Hazal asks that where do you learn that? Hazal says from these words. What is it said? That means all week around, you should have your clothes that you're working with them, you go to the office with them, whatever you do. But on Shabbat, you have to have special clothes. A clothes that they're specifically only for Shabbat, in honor of Shabbat. That means every Jewish person has to have special clothes that he doesn't wear them only on Shabbat and Yom Tov. Say Hazal, where do you learn that? Hazal in a Gemara Masechet Shabbat, 114, folio 1, right on the top. Look at that. Hazal asked me, me nine, sorry, Leshinu Begadim, Minatora. Where do you learn that you have to change your clothes on Shabbos from the Torah? That's the question of Hazal. Hazal say, from that that it say here, Velabash Begadim Aherim. Say in the verse, and you should wear a different clothes. That means the clothes that you're serving, Akadosh Baruch Hu, that's like Shabbat. 
but the clothes that you take, the ashes, that's referring to the normal week there. You can't use the same clothes on Shabbat. You can't wear the same clothes. And that's the Hiddush. So what does it mean? That even from what the Torah speak about, the clothes of the Kohen, said the Mepharshim, that you can learn what you have to wear on Shabbat. And that's the Hiddush. Let's go to verse 5. And you know what? Let's leave the verse five because the time running late. I would like to go to verse uh, eighteen. Let's go to verse eighteen in chapter six because the, uh, verse five going to take a long time to explain. It's maybe I'll explain it on Shabbos. Shabbat. Uh, by the way, the show on Shabbat. This Shabbos is going to be. At quarter to five, four forty-five. Last last week it was on five o'clock. It's fifteen minutes earlier for Shabbat, ending up early. Let's look at verse eighteen and look what it says. Daber el Aharon ve'el banav le'emor. Zot Torah tahatat. Ba'makom bimkom asher tishachet ha'olah tishachet ha'hatat. לפני אדוני קודש קודשים לי. Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the elevation offering is slaughtered, shall the sin offering be slaughtered. Before Hashem, it is most holy. On a shot of that volume, as I'll explaining, the Torah tells us that on the same place that you sacrifice the Korban Ola, okay, you should sacrifice the Korban Hatat. What is the what is the Hiddush here? I don't understand. What difference does it make if I sacrifice uh, the Korban Hatat in a different place or not? What's the Hiddush here? So first of all, let's explain what is Korban Hatat. Korban Ola, we say, it's a Korban that comes from Mahshava, Korban Toda, that we want to thank Sakadosh Baruch Hu, and that get burned completely. Korban Hatat, what is Korban Hatat done for? Korban Hatat is Mokenhu, okay? It's a person that made Avera, okay? And... They you have to bring Korban Hatat. Why? Because he made Avera. Okay? So, what is the Hidush here? What is the Hidush? So, I saw a beautiful commentary that brought by Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatsira. Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatsira, born in Morocco in the city of Tiflat, he born around 219 years ago. And he called the Abir Yaakov, that is his nickname, Abir Yaakov. He wrote a book, Abir Yaakov. But he wrote a book, Pituhe Hotam. Pituhe Hotam, it's a book with commentary on a Torah. And in, in his commentary, he actually brings the Mishnah on Masechet Avot in chapter 4, Mishnah 11. And Hazal in the Mishnah tell us like this, Adam she'asa avera kanalo katego, a person that, he actually created a prosecutor to himself. That means that the bad angel being created by the Avera. And that bad angel wanted Has Shalom to kill him. That's the job of the Yetzirah. That bad angel is Yetzirah. Okay? Why? Because he made Avera. He made Avera. And it's come to tell you something. Like but the Torah said, say Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatir. He said, the Torah giving you advice. The Torah giving you idea how you can change your decree and save yourself from that prosecutor. It said, say Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatir like this. From that that it says, uh, 
by that that you do tshuva, if you do a tshuva, if you do a toyman, okay? And that's basically the same like korban ola, because korban ola, why do you bring korban ola? Korban ola is a korban nedava. It's a thanksgiving korban. Like you're saying thank you to HaKadosh He said that if you bring the korban hatat, where you say thank you to Akados Baruch Hu, okay, and you do a torment to your sin, okay, for the sin that you done, okay, the same like this, that you're doing it, you have to do the Korban Hadat, where you do the thanksgiving, okay, you can cancel the bad angel. What does it mean? Wherever you say thank you to Akadosh Baruch Hu, on the same place, you come and you say, Akadosh Baruch Hu Asim, I'm sorry. Here's my korban, that's korban hatat. Okay? It's come to tell you, by that, that the person do tshuva, and he regret what he done, on the same place that you think, Akadosh Baruch Hu, you say sorry. And that will help to do a toilet. Amazing. That's the reason why you have to bring the korban hatat in the same place that you breed, that you shech the korban ola. That's according to Rabbi Yaakov Abu Hatsira. Let's go to chapter 7. Chapter 7, verse 37. I'm skipping quite a bit. And we have to understand what it's saying here. And Be'ezrat Hashem on Shabbat, I'm going to bring many more chidushim about that verse. I'm going to try and bring two, three, even four Hidushim I have about it. But let's see how it's done, because I have nine minutes. And it says like this, in chapter 7, verse 37. Zot ha-Torah, la'ola, la-minha, ve-la-hatat, u-la-asham, u-la-meluim, u-la-zeva ha-shalamim. This is the law of the elevation offering the meal offering, the sin offering, and the guilt offering, and the inauguration offerings, and the feast, peace offering. Okay. First of all, let's, let's understand what's happening. And we're going to start with the Zera Shimshon, Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachmani, that every week we're trying to bring a Hidush of his to understand what he's trying to say. And we have to understand the Torah tell us that this is the law of the Korban Ola and then Korban Minha. And then the Korban Hatat and then the Korban Asham and Korban Amiluim. Hazal in a Gemara in Masechet Anit in page 27, folio 2, tell us something very important. Amar Rabbi Rav Asi. Rav Asi say, Ilmale ma'amadot, lo nitkaimu shamayim va'aret. Rav Asi say, without the sacrifice, it's mean without us bringing sacrifice, the word couldn't be exist. Immediately asked the Rabbi Shimshon Haim Nachmani, that born in Modena 318 years ago, in his book Zera Shimshon, in verse 6, he said, But there is a specific verse from the prophet before the Gemara that the prophet said, In lo briti yomam valayla, hokot shamayim vaaretz lo santi. There is a verse that contradicts. There is a verse that say that if you're not going to learn Torah, the, verse, the world cannot exist. While in the Gemara it said that if you don't bring Korbanot, the world cannot exist. So decide, is it Korbanot in the merit of the Korbanot, the world exists, or in the merit of studying Torah? I don't understand. There is a contradiction here. One verse contradicts the others. 
That's the question of the Zera Shimshon, Rabbi Shimshon Chaim Nachmani. He said like this, there is no contradiction. And though that it's looked to you that there is contradiction, there is no contradiction. What the prophet tell us, the prophet Jeremiah tell us, if people not going to study Torah, the world wouldn't exist. Yes, is right. What Hazal tell us in the Gemara and Masechet Tanit in page 27, folio 2, what Rav Asi say, Ilmale Ma'amadot, Lonit Kaimu Shamayim Va'aretz, that's me. If you're not going to bring sacrifice, the world wouldn't exist. It's also right. He said, let me explain to you. There is a Midrash that called Yalkut Shimoni that's been written by Rabbi, Shimsh, uh, Rabbi Shimon Ashkenazi. Rabbi Shimon Ashkenazi, he, he born in Frankfurt in Germany. It's not known when is he born there. I searched, but I couldn't find. And he actually bring the Midrash in the book of Yehaskel. And it says in book Yehaskel in Yal Kuchimoni in uh, Remez Shim Nun Het, it's 300 and uh, Nun is uh, uh, 58, he said like this. He said, Sha'alu la Hafma. Ask the wisdom. A normal, with a normal wisdom, normal person, Hote Maunshu, a person that done the sin, what is his punishment? Shailulam Gua ask the prophecy. A person that sin, what is his punish, punishment? They both say if he punished, if he sin, his punishment is dead. Shailula Torah, they ask the Torah, what is a person that sin, what is he, what should he do? The Torah tells us, Yavi Asham Vitchaperlo, person that sin, will bring the Korban Asham, okay, that he admit that he done Avera, he will ask for forgiveness and finish. The Midrash continues and says, She'elula Kadosh Baruch Hu, ask the Almighty, Nefesh Ahotet, Ma'amsha, ask the Almighty, a person that sin, what? His punishment, say Akadosh Baruch Hu, Ose Tshuva V'Yitchaper Lo. And the Torah tells us that, that the, the children of Israel, if they send the bring Korban, often we know that that's that doing atonement for them. That's brought also by the Al-Sheikh Akadosh, Rabbi Moshe Al-Sheikh, that born in the city of Andripoli, in uh, in Turkey 517 years ago. He explained that when a person see what's happening with the Korban, how they shechte, and how they actually skin the, the skin the Korban and everything and then put them on a fire, he realized that that's what should happen to him. And Akadosh Baruch Hu did mercy, say instead of that's what should happen to you, but it can happen to the Korban, to the animal. Say the Zerah let me explain to you what's happening. There is no contradiction. What the Torah tells us that the world exists, <coughs> the world is exists in the merit of the korbanot. It's speaking about ame aratzot, a person that is ama aretz. What it means ama aretz, a person that cannot study Torah. He doesn't have the knowledge. He doesn't have the wisdom. He doesn't have the chokma to study Torah. Therefore. How do you do a torment to him? By that, that he bring a korban. And that maybe will open his eyes and he'll understand that what's happened with the korban should happen with him. And he'll do a torment. He say what HaKadosh Baruch Hu say, that a person that if he done Averot Lo Alenu, what is he should do? Yaase Tshuva Ve'itchaper Lo. That's mean that the person should do tshuva and it's, and it's going to forgive him. What is it? That the person that have seichel, 
have a bit of wisdom is that uh, he know how to study, he can study, it's very important. There's people that can't study. There's people that can study, then the obligated what? To study Torah. And that will do a torment to them. It's come to tell you what the Hazal say in the Gemara that il male ma'amado, if it wasn't because if it wasn't for the sacrifices, the world only in the merit of the sacrifice exists. Why? Because it's doing a torment. And korban it mishon kirva. That means korban. The word korban means closeness to bring us close to the Almighty. But what the prophet said, Jeremiah, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah said in chapter 33, verse 25, in Lo Lo Samti, that means in the merit of the Torah exists. That we're speaking to person that is a Talmud Hacham, a person that can study. It's come to tell you that there is no contradiction here between the two, those that can study Torah. Even if they done Averot, by that that they're studying Torah, the Torah will do a torment to the Averot and bring them closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But Lo Aleinu, there is people that can't study Torah. They don't have the wisdom. They don't have the ability to study Torah. Why? Because they are Me'ar, it's the Pshutim. They don't, they never learn, they never understand, they can't. Whatever the background was, those should bring korbanot. But those that have the ability, the seichel, the chokhmah to study, they're obligated to study Torah. By that, that they're studying Torah, they don't have to bring a korban because they're studying Torah. And they're going to understand from the Torah that what they've done, they're wrong. That's going to bring them closer to HaKadosh, but who will do it to them? And now we can understand what does it say here. Zot HaTorah. That's the law. La'ola, la'minha, ve'lahatat. That means the law that come to teach you to do, that you have to bring hatat, will explain what is the difference between, first of all, the Maran Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karo, that born in Toledo 535, 536 plus minus, years ago in Spain, he said like this, it's se'ola and then minha. The second korban is korban minha. Korban minha, it's, <laughs> you hardly can eat it. There's nothing in this korban. It's the cheapest korban. Why after korban ola come the cheapest korban? Be'ezrat Hashem on Shabbat, I will explain that, we'll bring different opinion. And then it's a lahatat. Lahatat, it's a korban that who eat from it? A half of it go on a fire, on an altar. A half of it, the Kohen eat. And then it says, La Miluim. La Miluim, Milshon Milui, said the Rabbi Haim ben Atar. What does it mean, Miluim? That you take that Korban and you split it to three. To three. One third on a fire, one third to the Kohen, and one third to Israel, to the Israeli guy. That means the owner of the korban. They can eat. They can share it. Each one gets one third. Obviously, Hazal explained which part you can eat, which part you can't eat. There is a different secret with the korbanot. Each korban comes to teach you it's a different level. The highest level is that all to Akadosh Baruch Hu, korban Ola, that the spiritual part. Then you have Korban, what we say, Hatat. Then you have Korban Miluim. Three different levels. What does it mean, three different levels? That it's come to teach you. The first Korban, we say, all to Akadosh Baruch that's Korban Ola. That's Ben Adam Lamakom, between man and Almighty. Then there is Korban Hatat. Ben Adam Lahavero. Okay? Then there is Korban Shlamim, that everyone benefit from it. That means that Korban between the man and himself. That means him himself, we have to do tshuva. It's come to tell you that each one of them is a different idea. 
just just uh, I want to share with you something very important. He said like this. He said that in every mitzvah you have gashmiut and ruhaniut. For for example, a mitzvah of gashmiut when we eat, when we drink, when we sleep, when we having a shower. That's a gashmiut. It's a mitzvah that there is on it gashmiut. Mitzvah Hanit is, for example, it's Torah, it's the mitzvot that we're doing, Avodat Hashem, okay, the davening. He said, if you look at each one of those three that we mentioned, Achila, Shtiya, Lina, that you have to understand that you have to join the Gashmiut and the Rohaniut. What it means, the Gashmiut and the Rohaniut? Okay, it's a bit heavy. There is Shem Kadosh that's called Shem Havaya, Yutke Vavke. It said that if you look in the Gashmiut, Gashmiut, it's the physicality, eating, drinking, sleeping, Achila, Shtiya, Lina, you're always going to get the two first letters of Shem Havaya, Yud K, Yud and He. But in the Rohaniyut, that it's Torah, Mitzvah, that means Mitzvot and Avodah, you get the last part of the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Vav K, Vav He. And the Chokhmah is, is to join the Gashmiyut, that means the physicality, with the spirituality together. And then the holy name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu will not be completed. That's from Rabbi Israel Merujin. Rabbi Israel Merujin, born 228 years ago, plus minus. He born what's called today the Ukraine of today. And that's Hidush. Rabot, I listen. He say when he was a little boy. Rabbi Israel Merujin. Listen to that. When he was a little child. That's what it says. That's what we say before everything that we do. That means that we have to join with everything that we do in physical and in spiritual to join the spirituality and the physicality together. That means first the physicality and then the spirituality. Why? Because in the spirituality, okay, there is the last part of HaKadosh Baruch the last two letters of HaKadosh Baruch But in spiritual, in the physicality, there is the two first letters of HaKadosh Baruch of Shem Havaya, Yud Kei Vav Kei. That means the Chokhmah is to join them together, the Yud Kei and the Vav Kei, the materialism, with spirituality. And by Ezrat Hashem, that took, so well, uh, took seven minutes over. Sorry, I'm going to cut here. So by Ezrat Hashem, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu will give us the wisdom, will give us the Chokhmah and the understanding to understand the Torah to join physicality with spirituality and then the holy name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Yudke Vavke, will be completed and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will say, Dai le tsarotenu and send us Mashiach Tzitkenu speedily in our days. Amen, Ken Yeratzon. Rabotai, I hope that you enjoyed the show. First of all, I want to thank each one of you personally, individually for joining the show. I know that's a public holiday. Many people told me that they're going away, that they're not going to be. But those of you that watched the show, I hope that you enjoy. I just want to mention to those that coming on Shabbat to the show, it's an hour before Minha. It's going to be in 4.45 in the big shul at Yeshiva College. Now, time for questions. Those of you that have questions regarding the shul, please ask. Unmute the microphone and ask. The <clears throat> Chabot. Good evening, Ralph. I've got a couple of questions. Tom, Jeffrey, the Chabot. Everybody, yeah. good to you. Um, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm a bit um, um, I'd like to understand a bit more 
Here we have, when we, you mentioned the, the story of this guy who was davening and he was bend, 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 was shockling, he was bending down. And no, then... no, no, no. Not only shockling, he lift him up his hand to heaven. He make all different... Uh... He's making a, yes, a, a, a thing of it. All because, different more. Yeah, because basically speaking, we this is exactly what you're trying to do when you're dabbing, there's going to be a part of you that's feeling the physical part of you is participating with your mental prayer it, it's actually you're doing it you're joining it this is what you've just told us now but with, with is the physicality and the spirituality which we um uh, that, yeah. that that's what we do we do we have to join together so so you I so how, but you can join it in modesty. You don't have to show yes. everyone that you're lifting up your hands to the heaven like you're bringing the angel down to earth. Who we are to bring angel down to earth? Who are going to look at us? We have to say thank you if our davening is even going to reach to heaven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> but that, that people do that and... Uh, yeah. And you know, and and and, and uh, well, the said Okay. By the way, that person doesn't want to speak to me. Sometimes he come in also to also mea where we daven, we are daven at um, in the morning in Shahri. <laughs> Since I told him that is cross with him, <laughs> but halacha is halacha. I have to say. Okay. You know, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, here we just you also discussed the question is if it's someone who's a you know, a, a normal person that can learn and can study and what have you, yeah, yeah. by learning and by studying, it's like it's, it's a shuba. It's like a, 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 it's, it rectifies the sin. It, 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 the Torah that that you studying it, recti it rectifies the sin. What you studying that's doing rectification for the sin that you done. And bringing you closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Because what's the essence of studying Torah? Is to come closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu. Right. So now, if you've said that, what about the Amaretz? What about the guy that can't do that? And now, no. he, he can't bring a Korban because we don't have Korbanot. So how does talking he... Talking about today. You're talking yes. about today. What talking about today. How, how does he do that now? Today is much easier than the olden days. Today, not only that we have books, we have the Mepharshim. Because Rabbi Yehuda Nasi said, Rabbi, when he saw that the generation degrading with the Yiddishkeit, with the level, he said, Now I'm going to write the oral Torah. I know that we not, the Torah tell us not to write the oral Torah. Kadosh Baruch Hu say, say Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Yudanasi, that I see that the generation starting to forget. Let's write it for them. And we have plenty books for us as simple people to understand. I'm talking to myself, you old tzaddikim. I'm talking to myself. You know, without the books, we couldn't find our feet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I tell you, I, I quite often, you know, I look at the interpretation, I go to all different books. Why? Because I don't have that wisdom. Imagine that we didn't have those books, where we will be today. How we will understand the Torah. The Torah tells us that you should not light a fire in all your dwelling on Shabbos. You know, the Tzdukim, they, they're not only that they don't light fire, listen to that, but if there is a fire, they put it down. <laughs> to put down a fire. So they do an Avera. Yes. So without the Ilchot Shabbat, we wouldn't know what to do with Shabbat. The same with all different halachot that we have. You follow? So today that we have the books, even the Amaret can understand. You read Parashat HaKorbanot. Is it so difficult to read Parashat HaKorbanot? 
You don't have korbanot. Read it. Just read it. Look at the order and try to understand, and that will do atonement. Simple than that. Doesn't cost money. You follow, so it's more, Jeffrey? So it's more difficult. So it's more difficult for the for the learned person because. He can't rely just on just reading it and doing it. He's got to understand no, more. That, that's, the simple more. Piece, that's the simple person to read yeah. the Korbanot. The more yeah. learned person have to study Torah and depths as much that you study more Torah and depths. That's yeah. what doing atonement to you. It's each one according to his level. That's how the atonement works. Measure for measure. Those that are meharatot, just read the Parashat Korbanot. But in the morning that we read Parashat HaKorbanot, Uneshalma Parim Sefaten. What do you mean Uneshalma Parim Sefaten? By that, that you read the Korbanot, that's considered to you like you sacrifice the Korban. That's to Ami Aratul. But though, that's the Talmidei Hachan. If you already done Avera, you have to go now to start studying deeper, deeper. studying stronger. And deeply to understand what's hiding behind every mitzvah, what's hiding behind every source. Why to do that? Why is the Torah tell me? What can I learn from what the Torah tell me? That you can't ask from our mother. You understand? Yes, yes. No, it's much easier. Clear. Because yeah. in the olden days, you have to bring a korban, you have to, to bring some money. And if you didn't have money to bring the korban, yeah. You understand? Sure. So today it's much easier, Baruch Hashem, that we have of you, Dan Asi. Read it. Say, Ot La Hashem, Aperu Torah Techa. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Any other question, Rabotai? Any other question? No? <laughs> okay. In that case, I would like to wish all of you, number one, Shabbat Shalom. Have a beautiful long weekend, a safe long weekend. Ba'ezrat Hashem, that Hakadosh Baruch Hu will say enough. Yomar day letzarotenu, and enough to all our chores, to all the Jews, not only in Eretz Israel, not only in South Africa, all of the world. There is anti-Semitism. We know that no one loves us, and I explained that before the Mashiach will come. All the nations are going to turn against us, 70 nations. And that's Gematria Gog and Magog. And that's one of the signs that we are already in a time of the Mashiach. So, by Ezra Tashem, the Takadosh Baruch Hu will have mercy, compassion on us, send us Mashiach Titkenu, and will say enough to all our souls and release those in captivity, those that have been kidnapped by the Hamas. And by Ezrat Hashem, we'll see miracle that Shabbat imilizok ufuat rovalavu. But please, God, that on Shabbos we dive in hard, we ask Hakadosh Baruch Hu to send Mashiach, and then we'll see him speedily in our day. Amen. Can hear that song. Have a beautiful Shabbos, a long weekend, because here is in South Africa is a long, long weekend. So wish all of you a beautiful Shabbos, a resting Shabbos, a safe Shabbos. To us and to call on Israel. Amen. Can you Have a good Amen. night. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.